Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 7th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Black Hat and DEF CON again, so lots of uh, press releases from company trying to talk about what they sort of consider the latest attacks and vulnerabilities. One release that sort of stuck out a little bit is one from Microsoft Security Response Center. It's talking about how earlier this year a company was breached via Internet of Things devices. In this particular attack, a voice over IP phone, an office printer and a video decoder were used in order to maintain persistent access to the victim's network. Now, not a ton of details here but they did release sort of the little uh, bash one-liner that was used to actually establish uh, the command control channel. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, really just of an SSL connection on port 443 and uh, not HTTP. So uh, it was uh, not HTTPS, it was uh, just sort of TCP over uh, TLS. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward and certainly effective. There are a number of indicators of compromise that Microsoft made public, like five IP addresses of command and control servers related to this attack. Similar attacks we have seen in the past, but nothing sort of quite as sophisticated and deliberate. I remember sort of one of the early video camera compromises that we have seen was used, for example, to then reach out to internal disk storage devices. And then of course there has to be another Spectre variant. This time it was researchers at Bitdefender who uncovered this particular method to exploit the Spectre flaw, which of course deals with speculative execution. And they dubbed it the Swap GS vulnerability based on the instruction Swap GS that's being used here to exploit this vulnerability. Initially, uh, they only noted that Windows is specifically uh, vulnerable to this. Uh, patches have been released for uh, Linux as well as for Windows. The last uh, July monthly update for Windows did include a patch for this vulnerability. And now we're going to learn more details about this vulnerability. Bitdefender made an extensive white paper available with more details. The other press releases they have are sort of pretty heavy with advertisement jargon and don't really have a lot of details about how the attack actually works. Just like for prior Spectre variants, the main impact is that a normal user will be able to read privileged kernel memory and that of course could then be used for privilege escalation and is as usual for these vulnerabilities of particular concern in virtualized or cloud environments. And Matthew Van Hoef is at it again and revealing vulnerabilities in WPA3. Matthew sort of made a name for itself by finding vulnerabilities in these wireless protocols. He already found a couple of issues with WPA3 before it was ultimately released and some of these issues then were addressed in the standard. But these two new vulnerabilities, they were introduced later on and are now showing up in some early equipment that is released with WPA3. The first of the two vulnerabilities that are being discussed in the paper is a site channel attack and it's related to the use of brain pool curves in order to essentially hash the passwords here. And uh, well, what it comes down to is that the time it takes to actually respond depends on the password used and then timing attacks can be used in order to derive the password. The second vulnerability is also a site channel attack, but in the EEP password implementation for free radius. And in this case, it could be used to derive the radius password. 
Now, the Wi-Fi Airlines apparently did uh, update the WPA3 standard. However, this update is not backwards compatible to already released devices. Uh, now, uh, the number of devices that are out that support WPA3 is fairly small, so that may not be a big issue. Not clear if any firmware updates are available uh, to prevent these uh, issues or if hardware changes are required. Now, if you do already have a WPA3 device and are using it, uh, well, uh, don't despair. It's still better than WPA2. And uh, one important thing note in the paper is that using a long and difficult to guess, essentially random passphrase, still makes these attacks very difficult. Most of the numbers being quoted, for example, uh, $1 to brute force some of these passwords. Well, that's only true if uh, the passphrase is in one of these large password dictionary. So if you're taking, a, let's say, 32 character random string, uh, you may still be okay. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.